My name is Salami Tawid Adibayo. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Sorry. I'm here to present my project titled Coin Crunch. Coin Crunch Case Study by Salami Tawid Adibayo. So the design tool used uh, Google, Google Form, Figma, Adobe Illustrator, and Photoshop. About the about coin clutch, why the name coin clutch? The name implies uh, the name implies a reliable and firm grip on saving money, giving students a sense of control over their finances. Why coin clutch have students in Nigeria teacher institution face significant financial challenges that hinder effective saving and money management. This includes inconsistent income, high living and educational costs, and limited financial literacy. Additionally, existing financial tools are not tailored to their needs, lacking features for small, frequent savings and, and financial guidance. Students also struggle with maintaining a consistent savings, a bit due to motivation and commitment issues, alongside concerns about the security and reliability of financial services. Hence, we created a student-focused savings app designed specifically for Nigeria TTR students. It offers flexible, small sum savings options to accommodate irregular income while providing budgeting tools to help manage high, high costs. The app includes financial literacy resources to improve student money management skills and encourage consistent savings through automated transfers and progress tracking. Additionally, it ensures data security and builds trust with reliable user-friendly services tailored to the student financial needs and goals. This is the first aspect of the of the, the design. We have the logo design process. Why did I choose this icon mark? I choose this icon mark because it has four distinct, four different distinct, uh, what's it called? That form the logo. We have the hexagon shape which symbolizes trust and draws inspiration from Nigeria old coin currency, aligning with the brand heritage. And we have the equal to sign that is in our Naira symbol. Also, we have the key O, we have the key O, we have the key O icon, which represents, which represents security. And also the overall logo form a letter C, which is the first initial of the Coin Clutch logo. These are the part of the presentation of the logo in different color. This is the logo um, app icon. And what, I know the second phase of this project is product design processing, which include empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Under that empathize, we are asked to at, at, the final, uh, at the end of the, our, our research, they ask us to present user personas, user journey maps, empathy maps. So here is the user research. I conducted three uh, two types of research, the quantitative and the qualitative research. Under the qualitative research, I used three different people to conduct the, the research. Name, 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 uh, what is it called? The first, the first person that I conducted the research name is Adidotsun, Afolabi Adidotsun, from Obafemi Awolo University, a 400 level student of building technology. And the other one is from the University of Abuja. And the last one is from Moshu Dabela Polytechnic Abikuta. And also, I, conduct, I conducted quantitative, quantitative research whereby I use survey and we, I have like three responses from different people, that 32 responses from different people. And here's my user pain points. After conducting my research, I realized their pain points and their frustration, their goals and their frustration. This guy, his, his name is Ogunchola Timothy, 28 years old, occupation student, Building Technology Department, 400 level, address Lagos, Nigeria. He's an aspiring builder with two, two years plus of experience in managing and controlling directing men, material, machine, and money on site. Love to watch football as, as a diehard Liverpool fan. He doesn't use to, he doesn't use to miss any match. He's a practicing Christian and cool guy at that. 
frustration is frustration is high cost of living and emergency purchases, which is imposed by low income from my parents and saves his money with close relatives. His goal is to buy to purchase a laptop for his design work to improve his chance of getting hired and to graduate with high grade, then secure a high paying job at any construction firm. And here's another one, a lady for that matter. That will multiply age 25, education of 200 level microbiology student. Address in Bada Nigeria. She's a graphic designer by excellence with knack for digital drawing and photo editing. She loves to swim and play fully boy at her leisure time. Her frustration is exuberant bank charges, low interest rates, commitment issue. So her goal, her goal is to our goal is to establish an atmosphere of love everywhere, be the biggest packaging item seller in Badon to get movie tickets fast without wasting time. So here's our user journey map. An imagination of how our user is going to interact with, their, with our application. We have different stages. And the stage whereby the user search for the app register dashboard, dashboard, make a savings, make a budget and log out. And there are stages for user action, app interaction, touch points, emotions, feedback. Here, when the user first of all get, when they sign for the app, they sign for the app on Play Store or App Store and download. They open, under the register and login, they open and create an account with email and phone number. User land on the home screen. User make a savings out of their income. User make it, makes, a budget on the income expenses. This is log out of the app. Under the app interaction, App Store, they, they downloaded the app from App Store or Play Store. They have the App Store or Play Store screen. Then the splash screen onboarding sign up and login. Under dashboard, we have home notification, savings budget, and profile. Under making a savings, we have savings screen, choosing, choosing, choose a plan. And under budget, budget screen, spend it tracking, and etc. Et 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 and log out confirmation on that touch point. When the user first of all sign for the app, they don't know which one is who, which one is they are going to use uh, that is okay with their system, with what they want. And when the another one is when they so they feel anxious when they when they when they reach the low, hey, mistake. Oh. When they register and log into the app, they are they are feeling the emotion is that they are thinking about what they are going to get on the dashboard. Then they hear a dashboard, they face the they do their face ID, fingerprint set scanner, and then passcode. They make a deposit deposit, choose a plan, make a budget, track income and expenses. Then they assist the app. Feedback difficult to find. They, they didn't find it find it easy to book on Play Store or Google Play Store because they just created the app. There's no much awareness. So they find it easy to register and log in. They said it is user friendly and easy to navigate. They worry about the different savings plan. Worry about the fact that budget planning and expense expense tracking features. Feel relaxed about the, about the safety of the app. So here is the empathy map. The first user says there's no need for, for me to establish my business after graduation because it feels that we can secure another, we can secure a job. Another one says I need to save up in case of emergency. And another one says I need to save up for my laptop as it will be my learning. My as it will be useful for my learning. There is no need to save with high. Another one feels that there's no need to save with high cost of living. And under the thinker section. There is no need to save on my mobile app since money can help to keep it up, keep it. Okay, there is no need to save on my app since someone can help me help me to keep it. And there's no need to budget since the money cannot cover my budget. And another one thing, there's no need to save for business after graduating. And another one is that they don't they didn't trust the all this online saving app. Under the do aspect or those aspects, they search for the search online for mobile saving app. 
use banking use banking app for saving instead of using the normal saving app. Budget on notepad. Save with trusted relative. And the first, the feeling is that they feel excited about saving up that can track expenses. Feel excited about the interest that return upon saving up for a long period of time. It is okay to refund an and then they feel excited about the refer and then features. And one of them does not feel excited to share the card details of the friend. Problem statement. Students in tertiary institution in Nigeria face a financial challenges that hinder their ability to save and manage their money effectively. These challenges include inconsistent income, high cost and expenditure, lack of financial literacy, limited access to financial tools, commitment issues, trust and security concerns. Under the user needs, then I think with, with what I deduce from the research, they need flexible income management expense tracking and budgeting, financial literacy, that is financial education, customized financial tools, motivation and goal setting, security and reliability. So here's the flow chart of how the app is, how we are going to operate the app. We start from, after starting then, we go to splash screen on body one, on body two, on body three. If you are new to the app, you, after the welcoming screen, you either sign up, or if you are if you are old user, you log in. So after logging, if the code is correct, after signing up, rather, if the code is correct, you are going to proceed to confirmation. But if it's not correct, you are going to it will redirect you back to the OTP station. And after inputting your login details, if the code is correct. Are going to confirmation if the code is incorrect, we are going back to the old login. So after confirmation, you go back to your you go you go to home page, then from home page, we have home buttons, we have savings button, we have budget and profile. Under under home home page session, we have dashboard, we have to-do list, we have quick quick service, we have notification, transaction history. Under savings aspect, we have automated savings, we have target savings, we have contingency savings, we have group savings, we have savings calculator. Then under budget, we have income, we have expenses, we have analytics, and under profile, we have my account, enable fingerprints, my account settings, general account statement, enable that mode, security, and support, then we log out. So let me walk you through my high fidelity, uh, low fidelity and mid fidelity and high fidelity because I have not finished it and I can't upload this here. So here's my low fee screens. We have the splash screen on body screen one, two, three. We have framing screen, sign up, OTP, success card. Create pin, success card, photo, uploading your profile photo, success card. Then your okay, fingerprint, success you card. I didn't get that part. Yes, I have not finished the whole project, so I can't do the mock up for the whole project. So these are my. Uh, low fidelity screens, and this is mid fidelity screens. We have the splash and unbody screen. We have sign up and sign in screen. And so we have the upload, photo, biometrics, and all of that. And we have the dashboard screen and home screen. So let me walk you through my uh, high fidelity screen. Before that, let me go to the components. These are the, these are the components. We have the typography. I use four pins as my, as my font. I know you will not like it, but I don't have choice. I'm a fan of four pins. So these are typography. We have the color aspects. These are my primary and secondary color. We have the dark color, status color. And this is my this is my grid. 
and these are my components. And this, these are the illustration and icons. So let's go back to the prototype of the high fidelity. So after some minutes, the app will welcome you from the splash screen then to the onboarding screen. You see that you save all the unnecessary. If you don't want to read anything about the app, you can skip it or you continue by going from one onboarding screen to another. Then if you are new or you, are, you want to sign up, you sign up, enter your details, you agree the terms and conditions, then you sign up. So you welcome you, congratulations, then you continue. You create your uh, transaction pin, then you confirm it. Congratulations, successful. So we up, is it that you skip it or you upload your profile picture? Then after uploading, you continue. You enable the fingerprint for security purpose, then you continue. Then you upload all your necessary things like bank verification number, nest of kin name, Relationship, what relationship does he have with you, email address, and so, so, and so on and so forth. Then you continue. Then you are welcome to the screen. Then you log in again and tell him you have to remember you. So the app is disabled. Uh, that sign up button is disabled uh, because we have not entered the details. But now that we have entered the details, and we can now sign, sign up. Then this is our dashboard. We have this the savings dashboard, and we have the we have the what's it called the budgeting dashboard. So these are the two dashboards. And in my to-do list, we have linked your bank ATM card. We have add the picture if you have not done that. If you have not done that before. We have add your BFN. So these are the three things in that. Then here we have quick services. We have automated savings, if I track expenses, expenses tracking, log fund, where you can lock your fund. We have log and news, where you can read news about financial literacy and what is happening around you. We have the, all the transaction history here, whatever you have done, it is there. And under that, we have savings, my savings. Here you can choose the plan that you like and not those stuff. So, These are the automated savings. You can have your money. Yeah, I think the, the area has not com has not been completed. So I will move you to budgeting. The budget has not been completed too. And here is the profile. I'm still working on it now. So thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. So I I love your UX. Like I love you so much. You. I think you are actually making me like poppins i love the way you play around with the poppins like i love with your <laughs> you just you're just telling me you're just trying to convince me to just go back to loving poppins but i think i will just try my best to give it 50 percent love for now so i love your your us case study it's so nice it's so clean so neat you even add um the work of a brand identity designer which is so beautiful i think i'm just going to come to your dm to um apply for a one-on-one -on -one class so that you teach me how uh. to improve on <laughs> okay so so far so good so well you did so fine i love your logo i love your choice of color i love how you play around with poppins you actually um tell me that you can love poppins even if i don't i'm going to love it so so far so good you did so well i'm so impressed you push you hold him tight you. you see where you see this 
presentation is actually bringing out your, <laughs> it's actually exposing you all. Because I don't think that uh, you guys are newbies, so I don't believe. Oh, so far, so good. You did so well. I love your designs. I love your presentation. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so, I'm going to for you with the whole of me. <laughs> Okay, um, we can see your screen, but we can't hear you. But I can't hear you. Okay, while we are waiting for Gold to, co to come back, Gold, you can actually mute from your end. You can mute from your end. So from my end, it's showing that I can mute you. So you can mute from your end. It's not showing that no one is um, actually blocking. So just unmute from your end. Then turn your, um, share your screen from your end. Okay, let's just give her two minutes or one minute. Can you? Okay, since she's not on the call, on the call, top of my care, you are next. You can share the screen from your end and then present your work. All right, all right. Ah, uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, class. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. We can hear you. And can you also see my screen? Yes, sir. See your screen. All right. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon once again. My name is... Uh, so I'm here to present my my project on the student uh, app development. So this uh, application is an application that uh, helps the student to save their money for a particular period of time before 
uh, the withdraw is in order to meet up with a certain uh, goal. So, and the app is targeting our students in across our university and uh, college of education. I mean, in the nurture uh, tertiary institution here in Nigeria. So, and the, the project goal is that uh, we dis uh, discovered that there are a lot of uh, people that are willing to save, but they could not have a uh, avenue of saving, probably because of the uh, the certain amount of money that is coming to their pocket, uh, though they think that they cannot see, but if they have a flexible application that they can help them to manage their uh, uh, money and at the same time uh, have a kind of a little, little interest at the end of the, the month and at the same time an app that can also help them to invest the money in order to have a particular interest. So. I believe they they we uh, have interest in that kind of app. And based on the in this app in this project, I followed the use of the design thinking process, uh, whereby well, I started with the empathy, where I put the the user in my own shoe to to look at the challenges they they are confronting, to hear from them. So and then I conducted the research. And this research are uh, comprised of a uh, quantitative and qualitative research. So, and uh, I designed a Google uh, form to to deploy the the research to the user. So, the form is comprised of a uh, fourteen uh, research question. So, which now is a uh, quantitative, and the rest of the the rest of the uh, five is a uh, qualitative yeah so and based on the responses of the users i'm able to identify that some students could not even i mean they are not even uh making use of any saving app and then and at the same time some of people that responded shows that they they are overwhelmed with the with the application like they not really have uh interest any interest from the application they are uh, already using and they are looking for also the one that can actually provide their services for them. So, and um, through that, I designed a user persona, user persona, and uh, able to identify some uh, user. So, like Adewale, who is a 21 year old and uh, he studying uh, this thing at me and uh, Though this this guy is a, is a tech savvy, so you know how to to make use of application. But David is keen to achieve financial independence by the time he graduates, so he's looking forward to having an application that can cater for his need, like probably starting the business and the head of the institution at the end after he graduated. So I'm looking forward to uh, saving money. So I look at the personality of the. Or this particular person, David Adiwali, and uh, I look at the interest, the need, expectation, the influence, the motivation. So the pain point is that uh, he is facing the issue of difficult in saving money. So the money that goes to his hand is having a problem in saving it, and I find at the same time, he lack motivation like and that's why this app will be able to meet up with his expectation by the time he's able to earn money probably the one he's using before is not realizing anything from it but by now if it can use the money to invest rather than just saving it so i think he will be motivated to do that so i also consider another person another user aisha Bilo. so aisha Bilo is a progressive student so and is a computer science student so I shall be below, uh, below uh, though she is a financially disciplined and then maintain budget thinking. So I shall is actually seeking for tools to optimize her financial habits and particular interest in app that integrate with other platforms. So um, through this application, they will be able, I will be able, students will be able to uh, add their other bank account, like probably like uh like uh 
other bank account to this application so to to be able to uh, manage is our money so the pain point is that most saving app don't provide the detailed analysis and she desires so difficult in finding a tool that integrates seamlessly with her, her existing financial tool so and through that after that i consider the flow chart for this application for me for the project i developed the flow chart and then where i have the flash the flash screen the onboarding the sign up page the otp verification the account setup our own, own pay which is dashboard forgot password like that like that so and i say saving saving screen so student will be able to 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 to, to save for a, a kind of a target saving group saving challenge saving and they're able to add money to their wallet they're able to to also withdraw so there's a app support and then so this is the flow share for the for the project and from there i designed a style guide i designed a style guide so the typography sorry the typography the i use a intern Interf uh, font and then so the color, so the color, uh, and they are the same time the margin, the grid margin, the uh, yeah, the gutter and everything. So, though I've not inserted my uh illustration and icon here, so I have the button, button options, and the input feed. So, do that all about the uh style guide. So I moved there from the low fidelity. So each of this screen, I designed a, a low fidelity for it. So though I did not use pen and paper, I make use of a, I make use of a, a player software to do that, especially Figma, to do that for the low fidelity. So this is how it looks. So the low fidelity, the the Splash screen, the onboarding screen, then sign on and sign in, login. Well, yeah. So these are the these are the uh, low fidelity. So from there, I move to the mid fidelity. So this is the mid fidelity. So start from the the splash screen, the onboarding. So like that, like that, like that. Move down to the to the last uh, screen, which is a long out long out uh, screen. So this is the mid fidelity. And um, from there, I move to the high fidelity. I think from here now, I able to implement the prototype prototyping. So this is this this is how the high fidelity look like. So I'm able to implement the uh, prototyping. So now we have to share. I mean, preview the the screen now so that we can see. Coming. Sorry. Sorry, it's loading. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you. So it's loading. I don't know what happened. What happened? <laughs> Okay, this is uh, okay. This is the, on, the first on body screen. So when I click on next, it takes me to the next screen. So I can skip it. If I skip it, take it to take me to the login and signing page. 
So then there I start. So from here I can back. So it will take me to the first on body screen, then skip. So and uh, this if this is our sign up page, so the user can decide to log in if the user is already having an account. So by click on login. So if I click on login, they take me to login, take the user to the login page. Uh, actually, it's okay. Okay, I made a mistake. So this. My network has started again to deal. Hello? Hello? From my end. Hello? I can hear you from my end. Uh, yeah, can you hear I think it's having. Hello. Hello. I think it's having serious network issue. He has gone off. Okay, so um. You back. Okay, I think he's having serious network issues. Hi, Tobi Mike, can you hear me? Okay. I think he's almost done. He just wants to show the prototype of his um, project. So I think he's having a lot of issues. Okay, so um, that. Okay, so that means you are up next, so you can just share your screen from your end and then walk us through the process for your project. Dami, are you there? Dami, Lola. Christian on the group. Okay, Dami, 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 please share your screen. Somebody should please help her out. I don't know. It's not like my laptop is not bringing the join the video option. You're you're using your phone. I'm using my phone to like to yeah. My phone and my laptop is. So it's my phone okay. that I'm using to view the okay. presentation now. For my laptop, okay. I can't. On your laptop, on your laptop, I believe your your it has updated. So just go to the conversation on, just go to the conversation on the group. You will see where they say Helen. Helen has started the video chat. So that's video chat. Move your cursor to it. It's clickable. Just click on it. You will enter. Then it will log you out from your phone and connect to your laptop. Okay, why you are my topic, Mike? I fully understand. So why you are um doing that? I I I I have a question for Precious, and I would love to mute and answer my question. Um, Precious, are you ready to pre um present your project? No, I'm not ready. My laptop is having issues. You said.
please reply my question on the group. I will read off that. All right. Okay, so you can now unmute now. Unmute from your end and then. My laptop is having issues. I can't, I can't. Please just type a message for me, please. Okay, Dami, um, Dami, just unmute. You're still muted from my end. So just unmute and it's showing that you're speaking. Well, I guess it's my network that's showing that you're muted, but I can't hear anything. So just mute and unmute again. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't hear anything. I'll plug you. That me, I can't, can't yeah, I don't know if it's, I, I'm not, if I unmute, if I mute, from my end, it's showing that I should mute you, not unmute, so you have to unmute from your end. From here, it's showing that I should mute you. Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. So this is my screen. Can you see my screen? You no, you can't. Oh. Started sharing my screen. Why is it blank? Good. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Now? Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your stigma that you bought. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll be going to where's my five self? Oh yeah, this is my Figma that's dashboard. So I started from the project overview. So, with the title of my project, what we are just seeing here is the Figma dashboard. See now? Yes. Your Figma dashboard that consists of your projects, Figma basics, PTC community, create a new I've file. Moved. Um, so I think I'm seeing a blank, blank page here. Blank page. Oh, this is serious. What do I do now? Select the screen you want to share. Mm, select the screen you want to share. Yes. So it's just showing your Figma dashboard here. Oh, Why is it not showing? I can see your cursor moving around. It's opening now. Has it opened? Yeah, you use slide. Yeah, for the yeah, yeah, like the projects see. overview. Exactly, we can see it. Okay, so this is the title of my project Cob Savings Mobile Application. Like Cob Save. Like most of my the people I interviewed, they overspend. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, ma. So most of the people that I interview, they overspend. Like they want to eat the best meal. I'm not saying eating the best food is not good, but they overspend. Like they spend money on unnecessary stuff. So 
that is the reason why I came up with Cobb Save. That's they should. Cobb, their spending, like their spending habits, the way they spend money, they should try and at least save something. They should not just like have to spend it all on this thing or on that thing. So that's why I came up with this title. So the problem statement and the solution, I don't want to bore us with all of this. So most of the students, like I said earlier, they don't know how to save. They don't know how to cope their savings. So that's the problem. Their problem is budget tracking, goal setting, financial constraints. Some of them don't have enough to save and they want to live within their means. So Cop Save seeks to equip students with the financial skills needed to save consistently, to reduce debt, to invest in future opportunities, such as starting a business after school or building emergency fund. So you won't be stranded when you, you have something to do like urgently. So many students in tertiary institutions struggle with financial management, they don't know their, they, they can't differentiate between their needs because fine we all love the good life but there are some times that we just have to look away from some things and be like this can't wait let me just go for this but some students they don't know how to they don't know how to differentiate from their needs and their want like what exactly they need right now and what they feel they want so most of them they spend recklessly even if they receive money from their parents, they believe that more will come. So they spend rec recklessly. So because of their reckless spending, I've, I've heard of cases where because you believe that you, your elder sister will definitely send something by the end of the month or your parents will send something, you go ahead to borrow loan. They have debt, debt accumulation, poor financial habits and all those stuff so the solution to all of this problem is to educate students to save small even if it is small over time like a drop of little water which will surely amounts to something over time so like saving every month or saving weekly or saving daily if possible but they should be consistent with it to accumulate their funds then they should limit their withdrawals. Like, it's not every time when you need something, you run to the hub to withdraw your funds. You have to limit withdrawal. Maybe we, we so the hub hints to limit withdrawal to maybe four times a month. And if you are going to take out your money, like maybe you just have to take it out. There is no other way, you just, you just need the money. Then, there will be a percentage that will be taken away from your fund because you're withdrawing the money when it's not due. So we also give them financial education, how to make money, how to, even as a student, how to earn, how to do side hustles. Please, can you still hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello? yes. Okay. Okay, so... Most of the students that are interviewed after school, they want to start one or two business. Maybe those that know how to barb, they want to start barbing. They want to start selling, like importing stuff. What is importation? So they can save little by little to do this. That's the problem statement and the solution. So this is the goal of the hub. Cultivate a saving habit encourage financial literacy, easy to use interface, security for funds. And this is my design process. Uh, the first one is empathize. To empathize with my user, because we all use savings application and some of them we are not satisfied because of rigorous restriction from withdrawal, when we are trying to withdraw or after we've successfully withdrawn the money. 
delay in flow and all those issues. So problem statement and user personnel. This is my design process, empathize, divine idea to prototype and test. Yeah. So for my empathize, I use this user research aims to understand users' behavior, competitive analysis, qualitative research, and quantitative research. Those are the three that I use, but I've not done the um, flow charts for these, um, the form I created. Yeah. So I did SWOT analysis of competitors. I checked other apps. Yeah. So see their strengths, their weaknesses, the opportunities they offer and the key features, what makes them stand out, their lapses. So see how we can get better, to so see how we can build something better. So this is for, I did for Harry Wise and I did for PJ Vest. So their strengths, they are, it's easy to navigate the, okay, I, I use Piggy Vest and I use Harry Wise, so that's why I did 42 of them, so. They are easy to navigate, they are user-friendly, their interface are user-friendly, they have flexible plans on periodic investment. So CarryWise allow me to invest as low as 1,000, to, to save rather, as low as 1,000 or as low as any amount you have like that. So that's their strength. Then, then their weakness. Like I said, restriction on accessing your money. And I won't call it weakness, but I will still call it weakness because the reason why this restriction is there is because to curb you, to, to, to discipline you from over withdrawing and overspending. Because for you to say you want to save, then there must be a reason for saving. Like we ladies, sometimes we say we want to save to buy a new wig, to buy a new phone or something. So when you are planning to save and you are still withdrawing the money, then you are not disciplined enough. So this, that's the reason why there's restriction on accessing your money. So yeah, there's few investment choices. Low, yeah, there is low interest rate. For me, I think big investor is just too much. Their interest rate is just too low for me. I don't like it. So limited option for custom investment plan. And investments are only in mutual funds. So the opportunity that they offer are you get to talk to financial experts that will advise you on the best way to save. They will uh, talk to you about your how like they will ask you how you earn, like how often do you earn? And then they will advise you on the best saving plan that will work for you, that will best work for you. So they also give room to ability to save in groups. They assist you to save towards a life goal. So you can save for a year, you can save for, you can put it like a fixed deposit, like that. So on the, their key features are automatic, automated savings, you can impute your bank account this is then automatically every month, even without you going to transfer the money to just auto debit you. So when you refer you in, you can invest and you can use it as a normal bank account. You have a personal wallet. So for Piggy Vest 2, it's user friendly, easy to nav navigate, diverse investment option. They are like the first, I think Big Invest is the first in Africa. Yeah. According to my research. So 5% deduction on breaking your savings. You have to just, they, they, they maximize your withdrawal to four times. So if I withdraw more than four times, they will take my interest rate from me. Yeah, they just take my interest rate and they will remove some percentage from me. So on Piggy Fest 2, you have ability to, you have access to financial advisors, ability to save in groups and phone or email verification, especially email verification, yeah. So automated savings, yeah. So you can save automatically, you verify and here you have targeted savings, investment opportunities and all. So that's for that. 
So for my quantitative research, these are the questions that I sent that was sent out. So I asked my uh, my users what are your main frustrations or concerns with saving with using a savings app? How often do you feel motivated to save? How do you feel about setting the tracking goals with the app? Have you have you used the saving app before? So like I said, most of them they rarely use savings app because they they don't even have enough to save because they've overspent their money. So tell me about, ask them about the financial setback they faced, those that have, those that have savings up. And these are all the questions, so. And then I move to my empathy map. What they said, think, what they do, how they feel. So I always spend, so I need a constant reminder to save. They overspend because they want to be independent in school. Uh, and they want to be independent after school. They say they want to be independent after school, and yet they don't save. I really have enough money to save because they overspend. I always have on plan Bs to sort out family and friends. I have a party to attend. I have this or, or that. I have a picnic that just came up. I have team bonding and all those unnecessary miscellaneous fee. So... But they think they are very interested in using a savings app. And there's tendency, they feel so because of that, because they feel they might withdraw the money, so there should be a locked option that will allow them to break the fund. And they feel that interest rate of most savings app is low. So what they do, those that use savings application those that save they end up oh god i feel like nobody's listening to me please are we still following me we are with you Danny. okay thank you so those are you breaking their fixed funds that's not the try to few of them try to challenge themselves and save but they can't save for a long term. For a long term, they are concerned about security and personal data on the app because they have to impute their details. They, are, they have to impute. <laughs> still this person whining me. They have to impute their details, so they are scared. They are, they are scared about their details. So for some of us, they have to impute our okay our card details on savings app. So they feel it might be, what what of if there is a, a breach of data and some scammers have access to their card details? You know, we used to hear of issues like that. Like I registered my card on the site and then all of a sudden they started debiting me. Stuff, so they're concerned about security and personal data on the app. They're concerned that these companies, they are online, like, I'm using piggy first. I've never been to their headquarters. I don't even I don't even know, like I have never bothered about asking if they have a physical office, but I still save my money there. Like they are concerned that what if this company fold up? And then they feel like they should be rewarded for reaching their goal. If at all they push themselves for this, if they push themselves to reach this goal, they should be rewarded for reaching their goal so the way we are rewarding them in this app is for them to as you are as you are, as you are saving you are earning so we'll get to that part later so these are my user person here oh i forgot to add this guy's name okay so he's my friend sorry i forgot to add his name did i add his name okay it's there She's there. So, my user personnel, I used to persons that I met here in Lagos. So, Cheesy is okay. So, his side also, will I call it side also, or his talent, or what he knows how to do is Babin. So, he's a 400 level student studying philosophy at Lagos State University. 
So after school, he plans to open a big unisex salon because he feels, okay, it's, this is his passion, like he knows more about it. So he wants to save towards the goal, but he feels he still needs to do big boy. Like, how will I save when I'm still in school? I need to look good. I need to spend on my babe and my guys and all those excuses. So his goals are to, his goals is to open a unisex salon after school, having the ability to afford basic lifestyle while still saving. He wants to be consistent in saving. He wants to start buying his salon equipment even before he graduates. But he does not know how to save as a big boy. Money, he spent money on projects in school runs and, and that leaves him broke. He overspent mostly on unnecessary things like clubbing, his babe, you know, party, house party and all those things. So he doesn't know how to save long term. So this other girl, I didn't put a picture, I put someone else's picture. So she didn't send a picture. Just get whatever. So she wants to, she's a fashion person. So she said she wants to start the fashion business after school. She's a 300 level engineering student at the University of Puerto Rico, but she has passion for fashion and beauty. So she hopes to start a fashion business after school. Her goal is to do a business after school. To easily save up towards a financial decent life. To be able to get financial advice and network with experts. She wants to be able to save consistently, but she does not know how to save because she's a big girl. She spent money on school projects. She goes to parties. You know, she has to wear latest wig and all of that. Yeah. So. That's for my the project overview. So after that, I moved on to. I defined their problems very well. I used to see my screen, please. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I did affinity mapping for them. So. I use FigJam to create an affinity diagram after gathering insight from user surveys and interviews. This helped me gain a clearer understanding of the user requirements and other factors. So some of them, they have, this is their problem. Like I said earlier, limited in source of income, inconsistency in saving, unexpected emergencies, devaluation of Naira, unrealistic saving goals, misuse of funds after saving, inability to trust saving half of a spending, saved out and hold of that. So the solution I'm offering them is to get a side hustle, to have a budgeted plan, to have a contingency, contingency plan, to save in foreign currency. So if you save in foreign currency, let's assume you're in Naira, convert it to dollar before you can go back and say i want to convert back to naira ah oh, you think twice i'm like okay, let me just give that money the dollar can rise tomorrow so set realistic and achievable goal within a specific time frame limited access to your fund save it in a way that you'll not be able to break just any hour. okay so i also offer them solution that they should check users review about the hub and their recommendations, hmm, like big events now, you can see review online that, okay, this, they are one of the pioneers of saving hub in Nigeria, in Africa. They should cut off unnecessary budget, start saving a little at a time consistently, and you will get there. So the features that will allow this to come into reality is group savings and lock option, lock feature, lock feature lock feature and deduction of percent on savings if the lock is broken emergency or miscellaneous fund so okay fine you don't want to save all your money you don't want to fix or fix you don't want to fix all your money so you can put some in miscellaneous funds like something you can just quickly with sure yeah so option to save in other currency savings guideline or instructor on application i think most application must have financial advisor experts, mentors, people that have been there, people that know how it works, people that can advise you, that can assist you, that can put you through 
because ignorance can be a very bad thing. You know? Knowledge is good, very good when you acquire knowledge. So, customer reviews and application history save lock feature, savings alarm or reminder. Yeah, so you must get a reminder every morning that hello, Damilola, you are here to save today. It's time to save and hold. So, I moved on to my Okay, yeah. I moved on to flowchart. Oh God. This is my flowchart. So I started from the splash screen to the sign up to customer information verification otp confirmation we know all of these things so i don't want to bore us too much customers details you know successful or not home screen feature wait is this thing big yeah so the way the customer this flowchart is as you are opening your application from the splash screen, the movement through, like the process you go through on the application till you log out. That's what my flowchart is about. So, your savings goal, your investment screen, your savings type, your lock funds option, your goal name, your target amount, the date, the dates left, the reminder. Sorry to you actually design the complete application for this flowchart? No, I know. No, 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 I'm not done with the screen. Okay, so you, can you, did you do prototype for the ones you did? This is the one I did. Where is it? Okay, one, like your high fee. So. Okay, so this is my, um, Mid, mid fidelity and uh, my low fidelity and mid fidelity okay. so this is the screens i have designed so i want to ask one question yeah so okay. when i you're seeing my screen huh? yes but well, you're not clicking on any of the screen any of the yeah i want to i want to show you something so I noticed that, okay, so I, I have done six, six screens, so but I noticed that if I'm, as I'm going like this, like I, as I'm doing it, I'm doing this. So it got to, see, do you see what I'm saying? I don't know why it's bringing out the screen and it's I'm blank. Seeing, I'm not seeing the display of your six screen. You're not seeing my screen? Are you trying to preview any of your prototypes? Okay, this is your prototype screen. Yes, but see, this is black now. I don't know why. Go back to your design. Let me see something. This is not the dashboard. Not the dashboard. The design itself. The cover. The file. Okay. This is the file. This cop savings hub. I'm seeing your dashboard. Should I open it? Like I'm yes, open it. I'm seeing your dashboard. Yes, open the file. Okay. So it's on page two. I'm not seeing page two. What I'm seeing here is your dashboard. Your Just the dashboard. That is what I'm seeing. I need to see your design. Okay. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay. So the reason why you're showing blank is check from your layer. I'm seeing a vector bell that is outside your frame. So the and I'm also seeing bi from your layers. Go to your layers. Take a cursor to your layers. So this your place. Hand side. Yes. Now the last one. The last. Let's start from the bottom before your um, splash. Now that thing is showing that there's an icon you took out from its 
space. So delete it. There's nothing inside. Just click on it. Just delete I've it. Been looking click for this. Delete. Okay. I can see it. No. Just delete it. You took out an icon from the frame. Delete it. Now there's another one yeah. called vector. There's another one called vector. You took it out. This one from your. Yes, that is actually your bell, but it's not inside the screen. Yes. Un unlock all your screens. Unlock it. Now, okay. like what I said during the class, immediately you download an icon. The first thing you need to do is to group it. Once you download an icon, group it. So by the time you drag it, by the time you drag the icon, you will not just drag the icon out from its frame. So that's BI cut of the thing that you deleted is you took the icon out from its frame. Now this um, vector vector bell icon you just you are clicking on is actually supposed to be inside a frame, but you drag it out from a frame. That's why it's standing on its own. And right now. Now, if you watch your other screen now, your this is your dashboard. Zoom, let me see your icon. Zoom in. Now, if you look at your icon, you see that your icon is thin and small. Now, move to the account screen. Move to the next screen after this one. No, no, no. Just move. Don't click anywhere. Just move. All right. Now, you can see that the two icons, now look at this icon and look at that icon. You could tell that the both icons are not in the same shape, are not of the same shape. This is actually looking small yes. and a little bit, in fact, looking small and short. Why this one is looking long but it's stretch? It's because you took your app, app icon out from each frame. Because immediately you download an icon, the first thing you're going to see, you're going to see that icon inside a frame. So inside you will see a vector made of made up with stroke or a vector made up with you know sorry an icon made up with stroke or an icon made up um vector. That is how depending the collection of icons you are using. On your own now, immediately you click on the icon, you drag it out from its frame. Now when you click on this icon now and you want to icon size is supposed to be twenty four by width and twenty four by height because you are dealing with you know the the, the like, let me use the word the packets, the housing. But now, if you, if you you can see your own, your own is showing the width is 19 and the height is 28.01. It's because you are playing around with the vector is itself instead of the property that is protecting the icon. You understand? The, I'm trying to use the layman's language yes. to explain to you now. Now, what you need to do, you need to delete both icon and download a, download a new one. Now, when you download a new icon, the first thing you're going to do is immediately you click on that icon, go to the layout to check if it's actually inside a frame. Now, this thing that looks like hash, it, it means it's a symbol of a frame. So when you click on it, make sure that it's actually inside. You can choose to drag it together with its frame, or if you know you're not perfect in it, you group it and name it. And, you know, when you group it, it's going to show you group one, group two, whatever group number is next on your file. You're just going to change it to the maybe bell icon or whatever icon you want to name it. Okay. Now go back yes. to your first screen. Go back to your first screen, your splash. This is first screen. Again. Click on it. Click on your splash. Now preview. Okay, so another thing, while we are waiting for your work to preview, um, check check if it's up to seven or six. Okay, it's seven. There's, there's an icon. There's an icon, a hidden icon that is actually there's something. Well, I won't call it icon. There's something that is actually creating a frame here, because there's something. Now look at this. Now, I don't know how to, okay, let me see if I can send the screenshots. Now, I found this thing on your design. So, um, okay, yeah, you are clicking, yeah, you, you've clicked on it. So, delete it. You just clicked on it. 
that rectangle. Where is that rectangle coming from? Can you zoom out and let me see where it is? Zoom out. Just zoom out. Just zoom out. Let me see where this rectangle is coming from. I don't know where it is. Should I delete it? Zoom, zoom out. Yeah, this I'm zooming out. out. Zoom to two. This is 200. Okay. Now, I need to see where this rectangle is coming from. Now, just move around. Let me see where it's coming from. Now, it's showing that it's hiding somewhere. It's showing that it's hiding somewhere. So, if it's not useful, delete it. Okay. So, I think the reason why that thing is actually happening is because something is outside and it automatically is replacing it as a screen. Okay. Now, zoom in, let me show you. Let me make some corrections. Mm -hmm. Now, you you need to, you need to, you need, you don't need to create your own status for a phone. So, what you need to do, go to community and search for status bar. So, already you're using iPhone 13 screen. So, don't do that now. Let me just, just get a pen and a paper and just write it down. Oh, I can't get pen. We don't use pen on paper. Okay, I can type just, it or you can, yes, or you can drop a comment, yeah. So the first correction I notice here is let's start with the way you've been aligned. You didn't align your work very well. Take out this model and zoom out. Let me take out this model. Now, first thing first, first thing first, first thing first is the height of your button. The height of your button is too much. It's too much. It's very, very much, like too much. So you're supposed to use between 45 to 50. And yesterday, I was oh, Can I continue? Yes, ma. I can hear you. Okay. So, like I said yesterday, the size of a button that you are supposed to use as a designer is between 45 to 60. And 50 is not bad. 55 is not bad. Okay, so you just use between 45 to 60. That is actually the height of a button, which is also the size, the thumb size of your user. Now, secondly is, I know I'm not a fan of some poppings, but at this level, I want to use poppings because you are, let me, let me use this word, like you are a beginner and you might not know how to play around with poppings because poppings look like a very tricky one. Now, look at what uh, Salami actually did. Um... Let's say he's good in his design and he actually played around with poppings and the thing actually fits in very well. So at this level, don't use poppings, use inter, use the default font that Figma, use the default fonts that Figma provides for you, which is inter for now. Then zoom in, let me let's continue. Now the choice of color, your, your color does not stand out as a fintech application. So your UX is so, 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 so good. So, so, when I mean so, so good, it's clear you actually understood your user. You actually understand their pain points. You actually help them to know their needs and their wants. You actually made them, you actually understand their pain points and you create a nice solution for them. But now in the look and feel, I, I, a lot is happening because one, your child of flow. Now, like I said, one of our classes then, I said, Every color that you are picking has a meaning. I'm using green. What does green stand for? Green is more like environmental color, you get. So everybody is using yes. blue, purple. I think just only roll and use purple from what I've seen so far. Everybody use blue, which is different shade of blue, which is actually the best color for it. Okay, blue and purple. Now, but you use green. I don't know if I call this green. I don't know the shade of green that I use, but I would advise this is actually not the color good for this fintech application. Okay, then another thing is your input field is actually fine. If you can help me mute, it will be fine. Just be noting down. Anyone you don't understand, just unmute and 
access this document. Okay. Now, the next thing is your input field have this, you know, curvy kind of shape, but your button is different. It's showing inconsistency in the design. Now, the, 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 your, your font, your font width is, the font width for the title is too tiny, it's too small, okay? Font piece is a nice font, but you didn't play around with it very well, okay? The, the size of your image, I love how you combine this image, which is actually fine, but it will be very, very, I mean your splash, it will be very fine if that screen is actually on a white background. If you're using this pattern of splash, our advice it should be on a white background get okay? or if you are using colored uh, if you're using color splash then you have to change your image to something that is white or whatever color that will not you know be it will not beat or that will not be visible enough for your user to read on the splash screen okay so um now move to your dashboard Now, your dashboard is having... Now, move to the account and to the dashboard. Just scroll. I want to see the bottom navigation. Just scroll down. Scroll down. Now, look at your dashboard and look at your account. I believe a user is going to go to account. Like, a user is going to go to the account screen from the dashboard. But your dashboard bottom navigation is showing just home, search, and profile. Then when I click on profile, I go straight to the account section. But the account section notification notification button navigation is showing me home search profile goals and history. Are you saying that I'm going to have two bottom navigation? Is what you're trying to explain to me here? Yeah? Now your dashboard, the 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 way the way you use it, the way you play around with it doesn't is not looking good. So our advice as our advice as a tutor. If you want your flowchart is perfect, it's okay, it's good, you it get it's good. But you do not play which one you do not use which one is going to be a decision. You do not use which one is going to be a screen, which is a process. You do not say, okay, this one is going to be an MP3. You just use block or true. So it was the right up inside that made me understand what next happened after the next one. So your flowchart, you need to know, okay, if I'm making if let's say log out are you sure you want to log out it's a decision are you telling me yes log out or no do whatever you want to do no cancel so all those things you need to add decision where it's supposed to be so so now your flowchart will not be like a guide to you okay now you know okay this one is going to be a screen so if you are designing once you are done with your flowchart this way what you're going to do okay how will my home page look like what are the information that is supposed to be on my home page that is, you write it down. If you want to write it down, I think I have a student, whatever, he loves writing down whenever he wants to start designing. You write, okay, what are the information that is going to be on the home page? You can list it down on a piece of paper or you drop a comment on your Figma. And then you will now go to go and feed your eyes and get inspiration how you want your home page to look like. Now, on the home page, if you want your, um, your, the, the, you know, the, we have the, the information where we have the name. The profile picture and then the um, notification bed. If you want it to be on a white background, you know, okay, this is the kind of inspiration I want it to be. If you want it to be on a color background, this is the kind of inspiration I want it to be. The thing about Mood God is where you dropped all your inspiration for your design. You don't design from your head. No, you don't design from your head. You need to look at something. At your level, you need to look at something. Okay, even up to this level, I am. What I normally do before I start any screen, I feed my eyes. But they are feeding my eyes, I might get too overwhelming. It happens to me. It happens to everybody. So uh, what I do is I feed my eyes. I take as much as possible not to feed my eyes to so many things so that I won't be confused. What I normally do is I feel, okay, I want the first section of my dashboard or my homepage to look like this. The second part, I want it to look like this. The third part, I want it to look like this. So what I normally do is I just screenshot those corners. I will screenshot it. And then I'll come to my Figma. And then I will drop the screenshot and arrange it. Like I will drop the screenshots. Okay, I've screenshots how my header should look like. I will drop it. I've screenshot how my bottom navigation should be. I will drop it. I've, I've screenshot how my second um part will look like. I will screenshot. I will drop it. Then at the end of the day, I will just gather the screenshot to form a screen, and then I'll start replicating what I've seen there. 
to create my eye, my own, using my own style guide. So that's what I normally do. Now, from this, it's showing that you actually created this from your head. Okay, I'm not saying it's bad, but at your level, you need to feed your eyes. Even if it's replicating someone's home page, even if it's replicating somebody's home page, it will help you as a guy to come up with something nice because your your design is just looking so crowded, so you know, um, too like it too tight. You, uh, another thing is you are still learning how to use um shadow. So in this kind of as uh, aspect or this kind of situation, what you normally do, if you wish to use shadow, what you're going to do is just go to YouTube, watch how to play around with drop drop shadow. Watch how to play around around with it. If you if you watch it, you cannot be following what the person is doing, and then you cannot create your own. Okay. Same thing now. Now, if if a, if I click on this dashboard and I want to scroll up, it will not like. Okay, let's start with looking at it now. It's telling me that from the whole thing that you design. If I want to scroll on this now, if I click on your dashboard and I want to scroll, it's showing that from this track saving set goes down to the bottom navigation. It's actually going to scroll and enter under this your profile. I cannot see the right top. Some are white, some are black. Like. In the aspect of UI, there's a lot of incons like your UI are not consistent. Okay. So anything any section or anything you want to design on Figma and you 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 love that thing as you love that inspiration and you want it to be on your own design. If you cannot do it, just go to YouTube, type it how to create bottom navigation in UI design or in Figma. You will see a video, definitely a video or something related to that will pop up. And then you watch it. As you're watching it, you're trying to replicate it. You're watching it, you're replicating it. At the end of the day, you once you're done, you can now carry it and then put in your design. Okay? So your status bar, go to community and get the default um, design for status bar that someone, a fellow designer like us, has created. So, so far, so good. If I'm to rate you, I'll give you a good grade. Your UX is so, is so clean. Even someone who is not even related to UI UX, you actually understand what is happening. But when the person moves to the UI, the person might actually get confused. So, so far, so good. You did so well. I love the fact that you actually attended the class, you did the project, and you try to present, even if your whole day is so tight. Thank you so much. I love this. Just try as much as possible to finish up your UI because I would not love to give you half grade. Just try as much as possible to finish the UI, okay? So then the correction for your flowchart, make the one that is supposed to be an input with, give it an uh, input, you know, shape, decision, give it a decision shape, you know, process, make it a process shape, okay? All right, so um, gold is not on this core. Um, who X is, who X is the remaining? So God is not on this call. I would love her to present. Okay. So um, everybody here has presented their work apart from Ezechi. So Ezechi, is your project ready? Would you love to present? Not really ready, man. Okay. Okay. So, so far, so good. You, we all did so well. Precious to the better. I don't know if you actually replied my message, but I think I'm going to check the letter to see. So, so far, so 